and well, a few ripples. Since early this morning, we've been becalmed. It is, what is today? It's Tuesday, the 1st of December, 2020. And we got just a little over 700 miles to run to the Virgin Islands. Now we just need some wind to get there. Uh, the forecast is light wind, generally northeast. Um, northeast for the next several days. Um, it looks like if we can get west of 55, and we're just about at uh, uh, 52 right now. Uh, if we can get west of 55, we should get into a little more steady wind, kind of around 10 knots or so from, uh, from the northeast. And so if we can hook into that, then uh, hopefully we'll start making some progress again. Um, as the, uh, the fare on this ship is getting pretty, pretty monotonous, and I'm starting to see the bottoms of my lockers, but we still have plenty of food and water, but of course uh, that's not infinite. So we need to uh, we need to make landfall at some point here. Uh, had an absolutely beautiful night of sailing last night. Um, it was just a full moon, brilliant night. About kind of eight eight knots. Uh, I'd say seven, seven to ten knots of wind. And so we were making decent progress, and it was uh, fairly smooth seas, and um, and just a brilliant night. So just absolutely beautiful. I took a swim this morning and put a little grease on the trim tab, and uh, down toward the stern there. Though we're getting all those, uh, um, I forget what they call those something mussels that uh, they have little shells and uh, then they have kind of like a, a stalk or a stem that attaches to the boat um, and uh, there's a bunch of them near the stern there so I knocked a few of them off but uh, I wasn't going to do a complete bottom scrubbing out here um, so so life is life is perfectly pleasant it's good um, but we do need to get some wind here, don't we? Well, it's a nice day for a swim. And out in the middle of the ocean, especially in tropical waters, you can just see for meters and meters. It's just clear blue. It's beautiful. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to get a little grease on the trim tap there will help the self-steering wind vane to steer in these really light winds. And while I'm at it, I'll wipe off some of these goose barnacles. Luckily, they're not attached very strongly yet. They, they come off just wiping my hand over the bottom. They come off pretty easily. And I don't want to spend too much time down here, just in case all this splashing around gets me a visit from some big shark. Got here. Get ready to take over on the helm. Okay, now I'm feeling something. Or was that just the swell again? No. Yeah, oh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, it seems to be coming. Can't quite figure out. Either that or it's just another cat's ball, it's just playing with us.
So let's take a look at the big chart here. We haven't done that in a while. We departed on November 8th from the Canary Islands and headed west, west southwest across the Atlantic and we're headed toward the Virgin Islands here. And today is Friday, the 4th of December. So we're coming up on one month at sea and we're approximately at 54 54 and a half west and a little north of 19 north. So here's 55 west, so 54 and a half. So we're right about here, right? Right where the tip of the pen is. And uh, we're going to the Virgin Islands, which mercifully is not distance wise, considering all the distance we've done so far, is not too far. Uh, it's, it's about 580 miles from where we're presently at. So we're getting to the bottom of our food lockers here. So we're going to eat up this rusty old can of spaghetti sauce, I think. It seems like it's still good. It's still sealed. There is some rust on it. Uh, anyway, we'll open it up and see if it, uh, see if it looks okay. On second thought, I'm seeing some rust on the inside of the can. I'm not trusting it. So, uh, we have some more jars of spaghetti sauce, so I think this one is, uh, we're going to feed this one to the fish. And we are entering new belt notch territory here. So that was my most common notch. So we've gone one notch past that. And even still, even still, it's not too tight. So, ocean voyages are definitely a diet plan here. Inreach is saying very light winds this afternoon, and then beginning to build tonight, and then we should have light to moderate east to northeast uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow afternoon and evening, Sunday. Yeah, so take that with a grain of salt. Um, I sure hope at some point this weather forecast becomes true. Because uh, this passage is getting long. And uh, the food is getting repetitious. And, and uh, I'm not eating as much. I'm definitely losing weight. Um... Water supply is okay, but of course I have to be a little careful. Uh, the main tank is down to about a quarter full, and I still have the aft tank, and then about seven or eight gallons in jugs. So that's still okay. Uh, if the wind comes in, hopefully we'll make St. Thomas in five days, five or six days. So we should be plenty good for that. But, you know, at this point, this is a big F because uh, uh, the, this wind just uh, left us just about a week ago. And it's, it's, been, on, it's been on vacation for, uh, for quite a while. And uh, we need wind to make this boat go. So, that's the situation. Um, it's pleasant weather out here otherwise. So, you know, I'm able to do some work in the office there, do some video editing, and uh, I can practice my guitar and uh, do some reading. So, uh, so at least uh, I can busy myself. That's the one advantage of light airs. Um, 
is that it's uh, life aboard is generally fairly comfortable, except of course you got to hear the slatting sails all the time. But apart from that, it's fairly comfortable, and uh, so at least you can kind of go about your life. Unlike in rough weather where you're just hanging on. Um, so, but uh, hopefully we'll uh, hopefully eventually this this weather forecast is going to come true. Probably time for an update, which is uh, how do you sleep when you're underway? And uh, my answer to that is I sleep. <laughs> uh, I get most of my sleep at night, and, and most of the really valuable, the deep sleep, will be between about three and six in the morning, just the way my circadian rhythms work. Uh, now, the caveat to that is that we're talking when we're well offshore. Uh, and well offshore, I'd say roughly means more than 100 miles from any port, port or point of land and, uh, and not, not near any designated shipping lanes or fishing grounds. Uh, when, so well offshore is like now, you're just out in the wide blue ocean. Um, so far this trip I've seen, I saw one other sailboat, that was about a week ago, and I think I've seen two big container ships. Um, and that's it. So, and tomorrow begins our fourth week at sea, so it's basically one ship sighting a week. Um, now the one thing I do have on whenever I'm not up on deck and watching is I have my AIS alarm on. I'll show you that in a minute. So I'll just briefly show you. This is my, uh, standard Horizon VHF radio, which has an AIS receiver. And it uses the same, uh, the AIS receiver uses the same antenna as the VHF um, because AIS transmits on the same frequency band as your AIS radio. So if we go to call menu, we go AIS compass setup, select, you can see here CPA alarm. And I have it set alarm one nautical mile and the alarm is on. Uh, so that's all good. So Anytime it detects uh, another AIS transponder and, uh, and gathers its information and figures out that the ship's track is coming within a mile of, uh, of my own track, which it's getting from the GPS feed uh, going into this radio, then it'll sound the alarm. And that alarm is pretty loud, so I'm pretty confident that'll wake me up. All you see out here is big ships, and they're all required by law to have AIS transponders. Uh, I set the closest point of approach alarm for one mile. So anytime a ship is calculated to come in within one mile of me, it, it'll sound an alarm. That alarm is very loud. It'll wake you up. Um, now, of course, how much sleep you actually get depends on several things. First and foremost is the condition. Uh, in rough weather, it's often hard to get any sleep at all because the motion is so violent that um, yeah, you can lay down in your bunk for hours and still really not get any sleep. Uh, that happened that first blast of really strong winds and I had to go down to the tri -sail. The sea state was horrible. She was just rolling like crazy. And uh, I just, I could not get any sleep. Um, in more moderate conditions like now, even with this rolling, um, yeah, tonight I'll, pro I'll probably get four or five hours of decent sleep. So, um, you can never, at least I find at sea, um, you can never actually sleep the night through. Like, go to bed at 10 and wake up at 6. At least I can't do that. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. Um, I'll usually start to get tired in the evening naturally as it gets dark. And then a lot of times I'll sleep for an hour or two and then I'll be back up. Uh, checking on things and, uh, and then go back to sleep for a while. Um, so generally, even though I'll sleep from say nine till uh, five in the morning or so, uh, usually it's it's rarely for more than an hour or two at a time before I'll wake up and uh, I'll, I'll check things, check on the uh, mainly check on the course. Uh, what course we're still heading, what the steering vane is still steering me on, and then uh, take a peek up topside just to see if I can see anything around. 
uh, see if there's anything amiss on deck. And then if all if all is well, then I'll go back down to sleep in my bunk. So, so I guess long story short, is in moderate conditions, I generally get plenty. Uh, I, ge I get an adequate amount of sleep per day, I'd say. Uh, in rough conditions, it's hard to sleep. Period. Uh, now people uh, people say, yeah, but. Uh, Sure, big ships have AIS, but there's things floating around in the ocean that you can hit. And my response to that is uh, something floating in the ocean at night that's unlit, um, especially if it's partially or mostly submerged, even with a watch, you'd never see it anyway. If it was a big log or some kind of giant container floating in the ocean. Um, you know, even with a sharp watch, uh, if you're doing six and a half, seven knots in the middle of the night, there's the winds go, you know, the wind and the swell and all that. By the time you saw it, even if you did see it, by the time you saw it, it'd be too late. You'd, you'd just pile right into it. So I don't really think, uh, in that scenario, having a watch is really going to help you. Um, it's mainly it's mainly um, in situations with other ships where you might be on a collision course, and uh, and if your AIS alarm didn't go off or his transponder wasn't working for some reason, uh, then having a watch would definitely save you. So um, so that's uh, so that's my lecture on sleep. You know, it's getting darker here. I wonder if we're gonna get a few more sprinkles. Oh, these showers are popping up all over here. So, uh, anyway, we'll talk to y'all again uh, sometime later. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.